Everybody, how are you today? Ah, you don't look fine. Are you okay today? Hallelujah. Okay, today we are looking at uh, or asking each and every one of us who is here whether you are a true disciple. Are you a true disciple? It's a question that we're going to have today and we try and answer it together. So can I have a read, uh, reading uh, from John 8, verse 31 to 32, please? John 8, verse 31 to 32. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believe on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That's Jesus talking and teaching our disciples there. So our topic today, we are talking about it. We are asking each and every one whether you are a true disciple. Are you a true disciple? So what is a disciple? A disciple, according to the Bible, is actually in the dictionary, English dictionary, is a follower. You are following something. You are following someone. So a follower in this instance, we are talking about you actually following Jesus. But what is it? It is a set of or a pattern of life, a pattern of living, a pattern of ways, a pattern of values that you follow that um, will make you a disciple. So the first point is, what is it that is contained in actually you being made a disciple? Or what is it that you have as a person that sets you apart as a disciple? First and foremost, remember if we go back to the analogy of how the disciples we know in the Bible were actually made disciples by Jesus. He is the one who appointed and asked each and every one of them. And the first part that you need to have is you reflect in your city there, is you must ask yourself. Jesus, when he was actually studying and calling his disciples, the first thing he said, follow me. But you can only follow me if you deny yourself. So this is where it actually started in uh, setting apart ordinary people from disciples. So that should be the case. That must also set you apart today as a Christian because are you in a position where you are walking where you deny yourself? So what do we mean when we say deny yourself? We are actually saying if you deny yourself, you are actually making a spiritual choice. So at that point in time, the disciples were called by Jesus, were faced with a scenario where they had to actually make a spiritual choice. So I'm coming to you today as you are here, gathered in many numbers as you are, and I'm asking you and say, let's go down the memory lane and actually retrace where discipleship began. And uh, what was needed for anyone to become a disciple? It was a person that you must deny yourself. So I say deny yourself is actually a spiritual choice. So at that point in time, Jesus was saying, if you want to be part of my disciples, if you want to be part of my followers, you have to make a spiritual choice. You deny yourself, that means deny the physical part of you. The way they were living, they were living the physical way. So Jesus, when he came, he was making them to make a choice in the spiritual. Seated as we are, I am taking you back to the time when Jesus was calling and making his own disciples. And I am saying today, you must then deny yourself. And I'm telling you that the denying of self I'm talking about here today is actually asking each and every one of you here to make a spiritual choice. How many of us are prepared to do that? Because when you make a spiritual choice, it means you are leaving your old self, your old ways of doing things. You are leaving the cultural way. You are leaving traditional ways. You are leaving the humanly way. And you're going to start walking in the spiritual way, following 
that which was laid down by Jesus, what he commanded you to do. How many of you are prepared to do that? Because you got to go and do it. You got to do it because without doing, without making a spiritual choice, there is no way you will walk this journey. You will continue in the old way, unrepentant, hateful, and doing all sorts, doing adultery, stealing, and doing all things that are not God. So today is a day where I have come to remind you that you must then retrace and begin where it all started. If you want to be the follower of Jesus Christ, he said, for you to follow me, you must then deny yourself. And I've told you that the denying yourself portion means you are now making a spiritual choice. So as you are seated in there, I want you to make a spiritual choice today. The days shall never be the same. You can't come the same when you go back the same. You've got to change today and make a spiritual choice. This is what it entails if you want to be called a true disciple. So I've asked you and said, do you want to be a true disciple? There is a scripture that tells us what we need to do. And uh, that scripture is going to come. But I'm at a point where I'm reminding you that you've got to deny yourself just as Jesus instructed. This is what set apart the 12 disciples. They then denied themselves and then they made a spiritual choice. When they made a spiritual choice, they never turned back. They actually started doing what was actually required in the new choice that they have decided to walk in a spiritual way. You remember among the first one to be called by Jesus was Peter and he actually asked for an excuse to go and bear his um, in law Jethro had died and Peter said, oh Jesus, you have called me to actually follow you and uh, let me just go and bury my in law How many of us remember the famous statement from Jesus? He actually then said, let the dead bury themselves. You follow me. So that was the beginning of actually Peter denying himself, having nothing to do with the way we live in the human way. So from that moment, he actually then denied himself. He, he, he actually started moving in a way that had nothing to do with what we do as humans. Nothing to do with our passions as humans, with our desires as humans. Peter started to follow Jesus continuously. He never went to the funeral of his in law. I must get people at that time as they say, where is Peter? How come he's not present in the burial of his in law? But these things do not matter. When you make the spiritual choice, you will then start to make good choices that will take you to heaven. Now, talking about you being actually a true disciple, because this is the question you must ask yourself. Are you a true disciple? And I'll say the first you must deny yourself. Secondly, if you are a true disciple, the whole mark or the mark of a true disciple is that he is actually identified by obedience and followership. Followership, you are following Jesus. Followership for you, you are also following Jesus, just as the disciples were doing. But this also entails obedience because you can't follow anybody if you are not obedient. You can't follow Jesus if you are not obedient. Peter and the light, they followed Jesus because they made a choice, a spiritual choice, and they became obedient in that choice. So, brethren, ladies and gentlemen, I'm calling upon you to deny yourself first. Number two, I'm calling upon each and every one of you to walk in obedience, obedience in following Jesus. It is not your way that you follow, it is Jesus' way. When Peter and the light were called, it was never their ways because they actually denied themselves. Meaning to say they left their old ways, their priorities, their passions, their desires, their needs. They left them and they started following God's choices. How many of us are living that way today? How many of us are prepared to live that way? 
Raise your hands if you are with me and you say, I am. Many are quiet, they have not even heard what I say. Alright, it is still okay. So I am now saying, you being a true disciple, it entails obedience, it entails followership. You must be following something. What are we following when we follow Jesus? We are following new life. We are following the spiritual choice that we have made. We are following good values that will take us to heaven. We are now beginning to people who are now born again. So you are actually writing yourself and actually leading yourself to the new spiritual life. You are now rooting yourself to the new eternal life. This is what happens when you become a true disciple. It is no longer I who follows my needs, my desire, my passion, my wants, and things that I want. But I walk and follow the way that God wants. You're going to be asked one day, go and minister in those hard places where you know they don't even want Christians. Are you going to do it? But if you are obedient, you have to go. Go and minister in places that are so difficult. But if you are obedient, you're going to do so because that is the choice that we will make as Christians. But the question is, I want you to reflect today and see whether you are a true disciple. Are you one who has left their own ways, their own needs? Are you truly and you have made a spiritual choice to walk in the Jesus way? Are you? I know you all. You can't uh, say much that I don't know because the majority of us, the generality of us, we always talk, oh, my heart is full of, you know, pain. My life is going west. Things are not moving for me. I do not have any food to feed myself. But I've shown you that video. And that picture I've seen. Do you think they are in the same place where you are? No. You are much, much better. God has blessed you abundantly. But they still live. That child, that people you see without shoes, without dressing, they are still people who worship God. Because they came to a gathering that we were actually preaching the word of God. We were preaching the new way. We were preaching the spiritual journey, spiritual path. They were part of it regardless of all the troubles that they have. Without clothes. And they care. They saw it. They care. Without shoes. They care. But what am I saying here? I am saying they are making the right choice. Because they want to be made proper disciples. So they are choosing the spiritual way because you walking in a disciple way is you have to make a spiritual choice. So that picture is full of people who have decided to actually make a spiritual choice. No Christ, nothing. The time we were there, no one ever asked, come, came and asked and said, can you help me with this? No. I don't do so. That is, they know the thing I live for is my God. I must follow him because that is what is key. But today, many, many of us today, we waste our time, we spend more time looking at our own physical needs. Yes, do so, but you must then remember, you are making a wrong choice. I am calling you upon to make the right spiritual choice that is the way that will take you to heaven. If you want to be a true disciple, I'm asking each and every one of you, are you true disciples? Search your heart. Are we true disciples? You realize that never you are not because you have not made a good choice at this point in time. You are still way in way in the old ways and I'm saying to you, you need to change and make a spiritual choice today. Continue in the old way that you are, you will never be a new person. That's why Jesus said to Peter in the Bible, if you want to follow me, you deny yourself. You are saying, do away with the old way of living. Do away with the human living. Do away with all your passions, desires, choices, and needs. But make a new choice today. 
That's what it is. So let's hear what the scriptures say. Because I am saying, for you to be a true disciple, it entails or it involves obedience and followership. Can someone read me? Yeah? You want to read me? Huh? Uh, read um, Deuteronomy 3 18, verse 4. Just one verse. Deuteronomy 13, verse 4. Let's hear what it says there because we want to look at uh, uh, obedience and followership. Deuteronomy 13, verse 4. Ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandment and obey his voice and he shall save him and cling unto him. Amen. Amen. You hear that? You shall follow your God, your Jesus. You shall obey his commands. You shall cling to him all the times. Now, why was Jesus calling, uh, for, calling uh, all these uh, guys, these disciples, follow him? Because he wanted to move them from their old ways and move them into the new way that was a spiritual choice he was making for them. And they responded and made that spiritual choice. Now, once you make that choice, you have to actually follow what he details when you walk in the spiritual, that is following Jesus in his values, in his commands, in everything that he would have taught you. So you are no longer following your own desires as a person. You are no longer following your own passions as a person. You are no longer following your own needs and wants. No, it is what God and Jesus wants. That's what you need to do. So when you are doing so, this is why it is important to actually uh, be true disciples who, walk, who are in the spirit. Because what you want as a Christian is what God did at the beginning. When he created you and he made you in his own image, he actually wanted to actually have you and have him present all the times. This is how we are supposed to be living as Christians. You are supposed to be living in the presence of God all the times. And when you are in the presence of God, it means your life and the way you live your life, you are following His ways. So when you follow His way and when He is present in you in your life, it means sin can never come closer to you because sin can never get closer to God because God is holy. So when you seek His presence and you are in the presence of God all the times, it means you are doing well. That's what God wants. God enjoys the presence of His people. So we must also enjoy the presence of God in us. But we chase God our way by the way we do because we live in the human way. We don't want to live in the spiritual way because God is a spirit and He lives in the spiritual way. So you must seek His presence so that you are turned into conforming to the spiritual way of living. As a disciple, then you follow God, you follow his commands, you will be walking and walking as a disciple. You will be walking and walking as a follower. So when you are in that followership, God will always be present in you. So many, many a time, this is where we go wrong. Many of us, we do not want to live in the presence of God. Because God is seeking us. That's why he gave us his Holy Spirit. Because he wants to be continually present in us. But humanity is in the habit of actually not wanting to have God present to them. Why? Because we are sinful by our nature, our physical nature. So why don't you make a choice today? You make a stance that you want to live the way you are. You make a spiritual choice today. So obedience, can you read me again? Uh, Acts 5, verse 29. Let's see what it says there. Because we want to be made true disciples today. Let's see what Acts 5, verse 29 says. Acts 5, verse 29. Mm -hmm. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. 
Amen. Obedience, 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 obedience. Peter is teaching people in Acts when people were gathered, including Jews and everyone, that there is only one way. You have to obey God, not humanity. You must fear God, not people. You must follow God, not people. Now, what do we do today? The celebrity culture is gripped us. Whatever celebrities are doing is what we follow. But we are making a terrible mistake here, brethren. We should follow and follow God. Not follow people, as it is said in Acts 5, verse 29. Peter is telling us, giving us very good advice. We must follow God, not people. But what do we do today? We follow people. Celebrate culture. Whatever they do, we do. The way they dress, we do. The way they speak, we do. The way they sing, we do. The way they laugh, we also copy everything. Instead of actually copying God and following God, we are following people. So we are making a terrible mistake in humanity. This is where we need to change. Because if you are to make a spiritual choice, you do not follow humanity, you follow God. That's what we are supposed to do. When we do so, we become born again to eternal life. You will never die forever because you become born again to eternal life. So you can actually start walking the way to heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. So we are talking about you being conformed to being a true disciple. And I'll say to you, ask yourselves. Many of you, you are so much into yourselves. You think you know better. You think you know very well. That's why you choose your own way. Instead of choosing God's way. Because God knows better for your life. You don't know your life. You don't know anything. But you continually walk in blindness because you are following your own mind. You are following your own heart. You are following your own thoughts. You are following your own uh, desires. You are following your own passions. You are following your own needs. So you, you, but you don't know yourself. Who knows your best is your creator is God. So you must follow him because he has good things for you. Brethren, you need to change. Why do you think Jesus said to deny yourself? If we were that important, if we were really good, it's because our humanly way is not good for God. That's why he said you must follow God himself, not yourself. So, we need to actually root ourselves into obedience. So I want you to repeat with me. Everyone shouts obedience. 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 That is the only way you can change your life. That is the only way you can become a disciple. That is the only way you can become a Christian. Because when you become a Christian, you are living your own ways, you are living your own thinking, you are living your culture and all these other things. So because of obedience, you have to follow what God has said, what he has commanded you, the values he wants you to do as a Christian, that's what you have to do. And follow all the times. But many of us, we are actually stuck in our own selves. We think we know better, we think we know our lives, we think we have the plans, we think we are, our thinking is the best, but right? brethren, right. until when you know this, you will never be a true disciple. Because discipleship is marked by one, like we say, you have to deny yourself, which is a spiritual choice. Discipleship is marked by two, the idea of followership. You have to follow uh, God, you have to follow Jesus, and you don't only follow him without being obedient. And we have read the scripture that tells us that you have to follow his commands. And even Jesus said, if you love me, you will show me by following my God's commands. So it is all about followership. In followership, you do not make the choice yourself. God does for you. In followership, you do not plan your own life by yourself. God does for you. In followership, you have to follow what God has commanded you to do, not what you want as petrols, not what I like in my physical needs. Yes, I have needs. God knows, but he will take care of them as soon as I start following him. He knows I need food, I need food. He knows I need shoes. He knows I need clothes. 
but you do not actually focus on God, you focus on Him, then He will provide. Just like He says, Matthew 6, verse 33, Seek ye in face, and all shall be given. But we make the mistake of seek ourselves first, and then where well, would you get anything? You will not. Because you are going the wrong way. The Bible says, seek me first, and then I will give you everything. But we seek our face, ourselves first. So you will not get all that you want because that's not the way it is. So like I was saying, you need to remain uh, rooted in followership. Don't change. Follow what God says. Follow the way. The values that you require are there. The life that you require, which is eternal life, is there. Because you must be born to you in, in eternal life. You can only be born to eternal life when you follow Jesus. When you follow, it means whatever he says, you will do. When you follow him, it means he leads the way. When you follow him, it means if he turns, you turn. If he goes straight, you go straight. If he stops, you stop. Is this how we are living our lives? Is this how we are living our lives? The answer is no. It is a definitely no. So what I have here, when you have time, you also need to be repentant. Repentant as a person. Repentance of the heart. I will not spend much time on this because we always talk about repentance. So you can never be a true disciple if you are not repentant. There is no way you can become it if you are not repentant. You may want to get the scripture. Scripture for repentance is Acts 3 verse 19. Can you read it? So we also need to be repentant as people. Then you become one who is counted. In the full, complete, serious discipleship. Unless if you have made a choice that you want to be a lukewarm disciple then you will not actually get to where God wants you to be. Read. Acts 3, verse 19. Mm -hmm. Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. When the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. The scripture, Acts 3, verse 19, gives us a pathway that when you repent, you shall be cleansed by God himself. So when you repent, you are actually rooting yourself to the new eternal life. So repentance gives us uh, the path to eternal life. You are now a new person. Born again. God washes all your sins. That is what we have for today. So in summary, let me just recap. You can only be a true disciple, if you, like Jesus instructed, deny yourself. And that denying of yourself is making a spiritual choice. Number two, you must then be born to eternal life because when you choose to deny yourself and you walk and follow God, you will then become born to eternal life. Number three, uh, being conformed to a true discipleship it entails obedience, obedience of Jesus. It entails you do followership. Followership, following Jesus in all what he commands and in all what he directs. That's what you need to do. So without this, you can't. And number five, you have to be obedient in the way that Jesus leads you. He knows better. You don't. And you must then remain dependent and be empowered. So you need the empowerment of the Holy Spirit that can only take place when you confess and repent. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you very much for listening today. Capture those points and you become a new disciple. Hallelujah.